Hey guys, Christine here, designer at Zurb. Welcome to the final lesson of our six part Zero to Website series. Now that you have a beautiful website coded up and ready to go, it's time to take to the web and share it with the world. Today, I'm gonna to teach you how to use GitHub pages to upload and deploy your website. If you missed any part of the series, click here to catch up. Let's get started. All right, so today we're gonna to be using GitHub pages to upload and deploy your website onto the web. Um, so right now I'm just on the GitHub pages website, it's pages.github.com. Um, it's, uh, the GitHub pages are a really useful tool to get your uh, projects on the web quickly because um, usually you probably have a project um, on GitHub already. So um, on, this, on this GitHub pages site, um, there are all these instructions for how to get your um, page onto the web, but I am going to head to GitHub right now. And if you're new to GitHub, the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is create a um, create an account. Um, I'm logged into my account right now, and the first thing I'm gonna do is head to this top bar um, under this plus menu. I'm going to click on new repository. And in this repository name field, I'm just gonna put in the name of my repo. I'm gonna call it my portfolio. You guys can call it whatever you want, um, but remember that this is your portfolio. It should be simple and to the point. Um, uh, also make sure that your the owner is set to your name um, if you are part of any other organizations on GitHub. Um, you can choose to put in a description if you want. So now our repository has been created. Um, Throughout this lesson, I'm going to be saying repo or repository, so it's pretty much the same thing. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm actually just going to follow these instructions in order to hook up my project folder. That's this folder right here where we have all of our coded files. Um, and then link this folder to our repo. So in order to do that, I'm going to open up my command line. So if this is your first time using the command line or you're not very familiar with it, that's okay. Um, we're gonna walk through this step by step. Um, and we actually have a separate lesson um, on our foundation site where we introduce you to the command line and um, kind of show you guys what the most common commands are. Um, so if we're, I'm gonna put this link in the description. So feel free to check this out if you wanna get more familiar with your terminal. Okay, so usually when you open up your terminal, your directory will be your own user um, folder. So that's um, this folder right here. Usually it's your own name, um, but I actually want to head to this folder right here, my project folder. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change my directory with CD and then desktop. So now it says I'm in my desktop. Now I'm going to change the directory um, and um, go into this portfolio scaffold um, folder. Well, the first thing I'm going to do actually is I'm going to rename this folder because portfolio scaffold doesn't really apply here anymore. I'm just going to call it my portfolio. So now I'm going to, in my command line, I'm going to cd into that folder. Cool. Um, now, if you wanna check that you're in the right folder, I mean, it says obviously right here my portfolio, but a command that you can use is ls, and then you can check out all the files that are in here and make sure that you're in the right place. So all the files check out. So now I'm just going to copy and paste each of these commands into my terminal. So this first echo my portfolio, readme, this you know weird looking command, it's going to um, create a readme file inside of your project. So that's this file right here that wasn't there before. 
Now I'm going to do git init. And this command will um, initialize your repository. And now it's linked to this folder on my desktop. And next, I'm going to paste in this command, git add readme.md. So what this command will do is it's going to um, add this file um, into, um, into my GitHub repo. So that's all, that will be linked to this page here. So every time that we add, change, or remove a file from um, our project folder, we have to do a git add into this GitHub repository. And then next, we have to do something called commit. So a git commit is like saving your files um, locally on your own computer. So doing a git commit doesn't actually um, change anything in your GitHub repo, but it will kind of, it'll remember that you want to save whatever changes that you made in your files um, to prepare it to be like pushed up to your GitHub repo. So whenever you're ready to save the changes that you've made to your file, we will um, usually do a git add and then a git commit. And then you also have to name your commits. Um, that's usually a description of the changes that you just made. And then finally, the last step is to do a git push. So every time you want to, um, um, you want to update your GitHub repo with all the changes that you made, we do a git push. So next I'm going to do this git remote add origin and then do a git push. So git push is, um, it's kind of like the last step that you do in order to push up all of those changes that we just did um, up to this GitHub repo here. So every time we make a change, we have to do, we have to do a git add and then a git commit and then we have to name our commit. So that's usually a description of what's been changed in that project. And then finally, we do a git push origin master, and that is what's going to push all of those changes um, up to my GitHub repo. So you might wonder what the difference between a commit and a push is. Um, basically, a commit is only saving things onto your own computer. It doesn't actually affect anything on your GitHub repo until you push it up. Um, so doing a git push to your master branch is ultimately um, what saves all of those changes onto the GitHub repo and your hosted site. So it's really common to, you know, do a bunch of local git commits before you actually do a git push. So now I'm going to refresh this page. And now you can see that all of these files, um, this file has been added to it. So we only see this readme file right now because the only file that we added um, was the readme.md. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to, in my terminal, I'm going to do git add period. And what that does is it's going to add all of the new files um, inside of this project um, into the repo. And the next I have to do a git commit dash m and then always in quotations is the description of our commit. Um, so this added website files. So now you see that it's um, added all of these, all of these files to the repo. Um, now I have to do a git push origin master. This usually takes a while, it depends on um, how many new files you're pull, uh, pushing to the master branch. The master branch is basically where all of your code lives and what's going to be seen when you go to your hosted site. Um, we usually do a git push master, um, git push origin master, and that pushes it to the master branch. Um, in your GitHub repo, um, it's sometimes you'll have like a bunch of different branches in here if you're working on like a team project. 
Um, and then when you type in push, um, git push, origin, whatever branch, um, you can choose like which branch you want to push your changes to. So that's just kind of um, why we say push origin master um, is because sometimes you'll be pushing to a different branch with a different name. Um, okay, so I'm going to refresh this again. And ta-da, we have all of our files in our repo now. And um, the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to head up to the settings um, tab and then scroll all the way down, um, not to the danger zone, um, but to this GitHub pages section here um, and then set the source as master branch. And then I'm gonna save. And then now, um, now we should be good. We're, we should be able to access our page on the web now. So let's open up a new tab. And the way that we access this is I'm going to type in um, my GitHub username, canterbury, that's me, dot GitHub, dot IO, and then slash your port, uh, whatever your project, your repo name was. So mine is my portfolio. And there it is. That was so easy. Um, so now our um, pages are hosted on GitHub Pages. Let's check if all of our links work. There's Laurel. And then our contact page. Our index page. There it is. And you're done. Your portfolio is on the web and ready for everyone to see. Now that you know how to build a website from scratch using Foundation, we hope that you'll continue to build many, many fantastic websites. If you have any questions about how we deployed our website today, feel free to leave a comment below or tweet us at Zurb Foundation and we'll be sure to get back to you. If you want to learn more about Foundation from the people who built it, check out our Intro to Foundation course in the description below to learn all about how to use Foundation and its components. If you haven't subscribed to our channel yet, click here to subscribe. See you guys next time.